Propagandist and Z-War correspondent Maxim Kalashnikov announced the deterioration of the state of the Russian occupation army fighting against Ukraine. He mentioned the terrible supply of groups and cases of reprisals by commanders against their own soldiers. We are having a difficult conversation here today on Kursk soil. The topic is very painful. You can see for yourself, especially after the death of Ernest and Goodwin's group, we are in a very bad shape with the armed forces. We literally do not have an army, but a militia, which sometimes lives only thanks to the help of civilian volunteers. We have to raise money for an army. What is happening to our army? It is a difficult feeling, frankly speaking. A friend who has now gone on a contract writes that something terrible is happening with supplies and training, Kalashnikov said. According to him, defeatism is overwhelming Russian ultra-patriots. Where have we ended up? Is there a future in this war? I look at what is happening and you know, the winners in war do not look like this. There is one reason that is leading the military actions to a positional dead end. This is the collapse of the system of state governance in the country. A stream of simply black news, negativity. We just saw strikes on the missile arsenals in Toropets. There was a strike in Tikhoretsk, also on ammunition. Everyone is already discussing the unsuccessful launch of our Sarmat missile. Well, and there is enough of everything else. This shooting in Moscow, the open conflict between the Kadyrov and Kerimov clans. You yourself understand that the North Caucasus can vibrate there. All this begins with a breakthrough of the Ukrainian armed forces to Kursk, or even with the sinking of a cruiser, Moscow, from the failures of 2022. It reminds me not of victory, but of a series of catastrophes and failures that began in the Soviet Union in 1986. Complete déjà vu, Kalashnikov said. He added that Russia was facing a crisis of governance as a result of negative personnel selection in Russia's top leadership. With such a state apparatus, wars are not won. The state system is becoming a collective moron. What follows may simply be disintegration. Either the government makes very significant, non-trivial efforts to win, or we will have to prepare for the worst, the Z propagandist declared. The Air Force of Israel used more than 100 planes during the night attack on Iran. The Jerusalem Post newspaper published information about this. More than 100 planes, including F-35 fighters, took part in the attack on Iran at a distance of 2,000 kilometers, the publication wrote. It is noted that the Israeli Air Force used the newest American F-35 fighters during the attack. Israeli military spokesman, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, confirmed that manufacturing facilities, as well as, Iran's surface-to-air missile arrays and Iranian aerial capabilities that were intended to restrict Israel's aerial freedom of operation in Iran, had been hit. He added, the targets that were struck were selected from a broad target bank, targets of various types, and we will be able to select additional targets from it and strike them if required. It should be noted that local and foreign media reported that explosions were heard in Tehran. Israel says that its airstrikes in Iran have achieved their objective but has warned it now has greater aerial freedom to strike again. Israel pounded Iran with a series of airstrikes early on Saturday and explosions could be heard in the Iranian capital, Tehran. The attack risks pushing the archenemies closer to all-out war at a time of spiraling violence across the Middle East, where militant groups backed by Iran are already at war with Israel. Daniel Hagari said, Iran attacked Israel twice, including in locations that endangered civilians, and has paid the price for it. We are focused on our war objectives in the Gaza Strip and Lebanon. It is Iran that continues to push for a wider regional escalation. The targets that were struck were selected from a broad target bank, targets of various types, and we will be able to select additional targets from it and strike them if required. The White House warned Tehran against retaliation, saying the strikes should end the direct exchange of fire between Israel and Iran. לפני זמן קצר מתוסנו שבו הביתה בשלום לאחר שתקפו מטרות צבאיות באיראן. זאת בתגובה להתקפות של איראן לעבר מדינת ישראל בחודשים האחרונים. תקיפת התגובה הושלמה ומטרותיה הושגו. 
בהנחיית הדרג המדיני תקפנו באופן מדויק וממוקד מטרות באזורים שונים באיראן, בהן אמצעי ייצור טילים אותם איראן שיגרה לעבר מדינת ישראל בהתקפותיה בשנה האחרונה. במקביל, תקפנו את מערכי טילי הקרקע אוויר ויכולות אוויריות של איראן, יכולות שנועדו להגביל את חופש הפעולה האווירי של ישראל לפעולה באיראן. כעת, יש למדינת ישראל חופש פעולה אווירי רחב יותר גם באיראן. איראן תקפה את ישראל פעמיים, כולל במקומות שסיכנו אזרחים, ושילמה על כך את המחיר. אנחנו ממוקדים במטרות המלחמה בעזה ובלבנון. איראן היא זו שממשיכה לדחוף להסלמה אזורית רחבה. המטרות שהותקפו נבחרו מתוך בנק מטרות רחב, מטרות מסוגים שונים, ואנחנו נדע לבחור ממנו מטרות נוספות. ולתקוף אותן במידה ונידרש לכך. זהו מסר ברור. מי שיאיים על מדינת ישראל ישלם על כך מחיר כבד. אנחנו מקיימים הערכת מצב מתמשכת, ובשלב זה אין שינוי בהנחיות פיקוד העורף. אתם נדרשים להמשיך ולהישמע להנחיות פיקוד העורף כפי שעשיתם לאורך כל המלחמה. צה"ל נמצא במוכנות C בהתקפה ובהגנה. הוכחנו היום פעם נוספת את היכולת שלנו לתקוף בכל מקום בו נבחר ובכל זמן בו נבחר. צה"ל עושה ויעשה כל מה שנדרש על מנת להגן על אזרחי מדינת ישראל. The Israeli army says that four soldiers have been killed in combat with Hezbollah militants in southern Lebanon. In a statement released Thursday, the Israeli military said 11 other troops were wounded during fighting with Hezbollah the day before, without elaborating on what happened. The announcement makes Wednesday one of the deadliest days of Israel's offensive in Lebanon, which it invaded over three weeks ago after a year of exchanging cross-border fire with Hezbollah. Israel has expanded its campaign in the country on its northern border, increasing airstrikes against Hezbollah targets across the country. Israel's military casualties have begun to climb in southern Lebanon, with another four soldiers killed by a Hezbollah drone attack earlier this month. In a speech Thursday, Israel's military chief lieutenant Jen Herzi Halavai signaled that Israel hoped to wrap up its operations in Lebanon. In the north, there's a possibility of reaching a sharp conclusion, Halavai said. We thoroughly dismantled Hezbollah's senior chain of command.